Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be back in DWG TrueView for a full tutorial within TrueView. This is going to be designed to be quick, for beginners, for basic, basic functions of TrueView. And again, this is going to be a full tutorial. This is not going to focus on one specific section. It's going to focus on the whole thing from opening the file unto printing the file. So with that being said, let's get into it. Let's get started. Real quick, before we get started, please consider subscribing to the channel. If you like the video, give it a like down below. If you think someone else could use this video or you think someone else could benefit from this video, give it a share down below. And if you want to see anything else done in AutoCAD, TrueView, or you have any general questions, leave it in the comments section below as well. All right, so we're making the assumption that you've opened up or you have selected the DWG TrueView program, and this is the first screen you'll see. Now, if you select a file that is a DWG file and have TrueView and that's it, it will automatically open in TrueView for you, so you might bypass this screen. But let's assume that this is the screen you see open, so we're going to come up to the upper left-hand corner. We're going to click on this little D, we're going to drop down, and we're going to hit the Warehouse Design Series. And I'm going to be using the Warehouse Design Series like I have in all my other videos or most of my other videos to kind of show you uh, just a general tutorial for DWG TrueView. So once you open up or select the file, you might see a blank screen, and this is where we're going to get to our first important point of the tutorial, and that is the navigation of the screen itself. So you have your mouse right button, you have your mouse left button, and you have the scroll wheel on a typical traditional mouse. The scroll wheel will get you to scroll in and out, and then hitting down on the scroll wheel, scroll wheel or pressing the button will get you to move around or pan as it's called in, in AutoCAD. We can also come up here to this button in the navigation bar, the pan button. We can left hand click and then I can just move it around. I can scroll in and continue to pan. And instead of pressing down on my scroll wheel, I can click the left hand mouse button. So we're gonna zoom back out. To get out of the pan, all you have to do is press escape or enter. And then say for example, you have the drawing on a separate part of the screen you can't see. You can always just come up here to this button that says Extents. Just click the left hand mouse on it and it should get you to the drawing right away. It should give you the limits of the drawing as you can see here. It is almost touching the tops of both sides of the drawings within the screen. Now with that Extents button, we can also drop it down. And there's a couple different options in here to save you guys some time and energy. Most of these options are kind of pointless, especially with the scroll wheel that you can go uh, forwards and backwards with. So the one that I usually use is first of all, I get the extents button if I can't see the drawing right away. And then the other one I use if I wanna go into a specific portion of the drawing, what I will use is this second window down or second button down, which is window. And then I can take this crosshair right here and I can go, I can left hand click, hold left hand click bring it to where I want to, and then left hand click again or press enter, and it will show you a specific part of the window drawing that you want or selected. So again, we're gonna take the scroll wheel, zoom back out, and we wanna select this uh, cafeteria area. I am going to select that, hold the left hand button down, then click enter, and as you can see here, it zooms in to the cafeteria area. All right, now the other thing I wanna show you as well is just a couple other things within the navigation. The first one is your mouse. So when you're using your mouse, you can also come up to this box right here and you can choose to scroll forward, zoom in or backward, zoom in. So if I click backward, zoom in, I am pulling backwards on the wheel and it's zooming in and I'm pushing forwards on the wheel and zooming out. It's a little bit backwards for most people, but some people might find that normal. So I just wanted to call that out too. You can't really see it on my mouse you can just see it in the screen, but just play around with that. Understand that that's what that little button does. The other thing I want to do, point out too is this compass looking thing at the top right or kind of right of the viewport. And what that's going to do here is you can come over here and kind of just wiggle around your north, east, southwest portions. So you can also change the dimension or the angle of the drawing. We're going to rotate it. We're going to rotate it again. Keep rotating it until we get all the way back. And then this is more important if you're viewing a 3D object because I can come here and I can click these corners right here. And as you can see, now it's giving me this 3D view. I can hit that bottom corner if I want. 
the bottom as well. And then to get back home, I can just go home right there. And then we're just going to display it back on the top version. And then this little sidebar here is everything you see up in the navigation home tab. So you have your pan, your zoom extents, which again, if we click that, it just zooms us in like we originally talked about. And then a couple other things that we're not going to go over today because, again, this is a basic tutorial. But if you find the need to use in a 3D setting, that's where you'll want to use them. All right, so the next thing we're going to go over really quickly is the layers property. Now, I have made a video on this, and I'll link it up above. Feel free to check it out. But to get to the layers, we are going to come up to this box right here. And you have multiple different options. And what a layer is, is it's usually created within AutoCAD to turn on and off. So for example, right here, you see all these circles. This is for a fire extinguisher radius and diameter measurement to make sure the entire building has coverage for fire extinguishers. This is typically part of code for most warehousing environments. And we want to turn those off because we want to eventually print this image out. So we don't need all these circles in there. So the way to do that is we're going to come up here. We're going to drop down what looks to be a door right here. And then we're going to come down to fire extinguisher distance. Now you'll see here as we zoom in that there is a light bulb, a sun, and a lock. Now there's a couple layers that are locked like the building columns. The lock layer means you can't turn them off. They will always be visible and you can't move them. It's more specific to AutoCAD. But in this case, you will not be able to turn those off because they are locked. And we want those to stay locked because that is an integral part of the building itself. So again, fire extinguisher right here. You can freeze or thaw. What we want to do is just turn them off. We just want to turn the layer on or off because it makes it invisible versus visible. So what we're going to do is we're going to click that little light bulb button. And as you can see here, it turned the layer completely off. So now you don't see all these circles. And again, they're just dimension circles. So you don't really need them when you're talking about a regular view of the warehouse. And as far as layers go, that's really all you need to know for the basic level of DWG TrueView. There's not much else. Again, the lock function will lock the layers. You can't do anything when they're locked, but anything else you can turn on and off. If you want to go back in and turn other things off too, say you want to show the empty uh, warehouse without the rack, we can find the rack as well. And that is going to be right here in reserve racking. We can turn that off. And as you can see here now, when we zoom in, again, scroll mouse button, you will see that you just see the column beams in the center. You want to keep those because obviously, again, it's part of the construction of the warehouse, but the warehouse is now completely empty. We're going to go back here and we are just going to turn those back on. And as you can see here, they are now back on. We are going to press escape and that removes that drop down. Now, everything else in the layers, again, you don't need to know about. I have a more detailed video. I'll link it up above. But again, very useful for understanding um, what you want to turn off and what you want to show if you're trying to print this or send it to someone. All right, so we're going to go over a couple more things before we get ready to print this drawing out. And the one of the last things I want to go over, but it's very crucial and one that you typically would use to see a drawing or one you might use when you are opening a drawing for someone else is to actually take a measurement. So I'm not going to go into how to take the area, but I will go into how to just measure in DWG TrueView. I do have another video as well. Again, you can see all of these within the TrueView video section within my channel. But what we're going to do to measure is say we want to measure the size of this rack or the length of the rack. We're going to come up here to measure. We're going to go to distance. And then we are going to come to the end of the rack right there. You're going to left hand click. And then you're going to come to the other end. Left hand click. And then as you can see below, it's not going to give you anywhere else. But below, it's going to give you the 223 feet and zero inches that the rack is. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna escape and we're gonna do the same thing because we wanna take the outside measurement of the building. We're going to now click this instead because it's on measure. We're going to come up. We are going to zoom out with the scroll wheel and then zoom back in. You don't have to touch anything. It will stay automatically attached to this line. Zoom back in, left click. And as you can see down below, 379 feet for that building size. Now, the other thing I want to go over too is we want to go over just the file tabs and layout tab. Again, this is going to be one of the last things you see within the screen. And it's just something in case it trips you up that you can change. But basically what you can do here is look at the file tabs. We're going to turn that off. 
as you can see here, the left hand file tabs are no longer available. You just turn that back on and there you go. You have the start window versus the warehouse design. So we can click start, warehouse design. You have the layout tabs below. The layout tabs uh, provide you with the layout, the model. And if you go to layout right there, you go to model. I almost always exclusively use model just because I don't like to go in between tabs. You can preset a layout to print out, but to me again, if I'm only using this occasionally, I don't really have the time or energy to do that. You can also tile horizontally and vertically. So tile vertically and then cascade too. So again, when you, if we want to get out of this, all you have to do is click the maximize button, which can also be found right here. And the last thing we're going to do is we're going to print this off in both a PDF and or piece of paper copy that you would use for your office. And we're going to do that right now. All right, so as previously mentioned, we are going to print off the drawing that you see here. And there's really one very quick and easy way to do this. And I made a video about it, so you can watch the video if that's all you're interested in. But what we're going to do is here, we're going to come up to the left hand uh, D button that drops down. We're going to click print. We're not going to go to export. We're going to come down to print and we're just going to left hand click. And once we're in the print function, we are actually going to, you have two options here, right? You have a printer plotter, so you can either pick up a printer or a plotter, or you can export it to PDF. So again, I've made videos on this, but the most important thing to note in this is that once you have your printer plotter selected, let's pretend we have one because I'm not connected. You want to turn or you want to make sure you are good with plotting the object line weights. Now, the reason I say this is because a lot of drawings you'll come into have people who have created a drawing with object line weights that are very thick, but they don't show up on the drawing. So you won't be able to see them or be able to tell they're very uh, thick lines. So with that being said, I almost always uncheck that box because I do not want to plot the object line weights because I want everything to be crisp and clear. So when that, when you've unselected that box, we're going to come down here. Now I almost always do window as well. And what window allows you to do is it allows you to take a window just like the window button in the navigation bar and take the entire drawing that you want or as little as you want. And we're going to take the entire drawing and then you can set it a plot right here. And then again, once you're done, because you've pretty much done everything, you can click OK. Now, obviously, no plot device detected. Please select another device. It's fine. I don't have anything detected right now or set up. But what we'll do here, too, is I'll show you how to do the PDF version. And you go down to D you'll click the printer plotter. You'll go to DWG to PDF. And again, same thing. We already have everything set up. It's almost the same as printing. But again, you have the option to plot object line weights. We're going to click preview here. And as you can see, this is the preview of the drawing that you're about to print out. We are going to escape, press the escape button and click OK. Right there. And I'm going to click cancel because, again, we're not too worried about plot or exporting it to a PDF. But again, you go through the proper steps of saving at that point and you'd be able to have your drawing in a PDF version. All right, so that's going to wrap the video here. Again, kind of a tutorial on how to use DWG TrueView really quickly. Uh, kind of a real life example of how you would get something sent to you, open it up and print it out for others or find the dimension of something if you needed to from someone else. And again, this was designed for people who really don't use AutoCAD at all. They're just being introduced to DWG TrueView. Might have to use it a couple times a year. Don't need anything crazy detailed, but need to know enough and need to know how to navigate TrueView. So with that being said, I appreciate you watching the video. Again, subscribe, give it a like if you found it helpful. Share it with anyone if you think they could find it helpful. If you want to see something else done in DWG TrueView, AutoCAD, or you have any general questions, leave in the comment section below.